Hello, once again, it's chapter 19, key questions. Number one, describe the purpose and impact of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uh, well, the purpose of it, written by Harriet Beecher Stowe, was to point out the evils of slavery. She focused specifically on uh, the separation of families, uh, because the Fugitive Slave Act had upset her so much, she wanted to make sure that people understood what the separation of families would look like, pulling people away from their families, selling them to evil slave owners. Um, and so her book uh, created quite a bit, as far as the impact, it created quite a bit of anger about slavery and opposition. Not only is, was it the most widely read book in America during that time period and pushed many to become abolitionists, but it also influenced European nations like Britain and France from supporting the Confederacy during the Civil War. Even more, the impact was felt in the South as they were extremely angered by this book and felt uh, wronged by someone who wrote such an emotional book uh, without having done any research or visited the South. Number two, explain the events and reasoning behind the outbreak of Civil War in Kansas. Well, the events is that it was uh, opened by the Kansas-Nebraska Act, pushed by Stephen A. Douglas, it was open for popular sovereignty. Uh, people flooded in from Missouri to try to make it a slave state, and people flooded in from New England and from uh, the Northwest, states like Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana. They flooded to make it a free state. Um, as they attempted to vote to create a, a government, um, the pro-slavery group uh, committed fraud by voting more than once and cheating the system, and they created a pro-slavery government. Meanwhile, anti-slavery people... They were upset by this uh, flaw or this um, faulty government built on fraud, and they created a second government in Kansas. Uh, these two governments could not coexist, and so the group supporting each side ended up breaking out in violence. First, you had the sacking of Lawrence, a uh, free soils uh, site with the Free State Hotel. Um, it gets burned to the ground by anti or excuse me pro slavery people. And then you have the counterattack by John Brown at Potawatomi Creek, who murdered. Uh, slavery supporters in cold blood. And that violence continued all the way throughout the 1850s uh, until, well, even honestly past even the end of the Civil War. Number three, what happened between Preston Brooks and Charles Sumner? So not only were they getting violent in Kansas, Brooks and Sumner got violent in Congress. Charles Sumner was an anti-slavery guy, and he spoke out against a South Carolina family, uh, calling them uh, some very choice names. Uh, as he spoke out against that group, uh, Preston Brooks, whose cousin was one of the men that Sumner was talking bad about, Brooks is so upset that he approaches Charles Sumner in the next day and beats him with his cane to where it even breaks in half. This resembled an even greater separation of the nation because it's one thing for common people to fight. It's another thing if the leaders of our country are actually engaging in physical violence. Number four, why were Democrats able to win the election of 1856 over the Republicans? Besides the fact that they chose a man who did not have any enemies, um, they also uh, were enabled by the fact that many southern states were threatening to secede should a Republican win. The Republican platform was free soil and would not support much of what the South wanted. And so with their threat that they would secede um, if the Republican Party won, uh, that pushed many to not vote for the Republicans. Number five, what was the subject of Dred Scott versus Sanford? At its core, it's about a slave named Dred Scott who's moved by a slave owner to a free state, and he sues for his freedom because he's a slave living in free territory. So how did the Supreme Court decision in this case increase sectional tensions? Well, it was bad enough that they decided that Dred Scott was still a slave, even though he lived in free territory. What happens is Roger Taney, the, the chief justice, he and the court decide that not only is he a slave, but they also go on to say that the that Congress and no territory can make any laws over slavery. What that meant is it wouldn't matter if Congress or a state decided that slaves should not be allowed. If people owned slaves, well, then they would keep those slaves. So this undoes a lot of the compromises that had previously been forged, including the Missouri Compromise in their 3630 line and even the Compromise of 1850. This now completely undoes free versus slave territory and protects slavery everywhere, and it divides the tensions uh, between both sides, or excuse me, increases tension, sectional tensions. Number six, how did the financial crash of 1857 impact the attitude of the South? Well, it increased their confidence. Since the uh, impact was only felt in the North, um, only Northern manufacturers and bankers felt the crisis. The, the South felt that the cotton kingdom was safe from financial collapse, and this made them believe that should they separate from the North and secede, that they would be perfectly fine economically speaking.
Number seven, describe Lincoln's background. Well, he was an Illinois uh, uh, lawyer and congressman. Uh, he decided not to run for a second term. Uh, and he gets reinvolved. That second question there for number seven, he gets reinvolved in politics because of the uh, Kansas Nebraska Act. He was so upset by uh, that they were opening up more territory uh, to potentially be slave, even though two compromises had pretty much said that that it should be left uh, free territory. That he decides to get involved, and then he ends up engaging in several debates in 1858 in the senatorial election of Illinois with Stephen A. Douglas. And the main subject, because it was the main subject of the day, was over slavery. He gets Stephen A. Douglas to admit in what they call the Freeport Doctrine. He gets Stephen A. Douglas, um, he gets him to admit that it did not matter what the Supreme Court decided, uh, that if slavery was unpopular, it would eventually disappear. That's a big deal because later when Stephen A. Douglas runs for president, the fact that he would not defend slavery uh, means that Southern Democrats would not support him for the presidency. Number eight, why did John Brown lead a raid on Harper's Ferry, Virginia, and how did this event divide the nation? Well, John Brown led the raid because he wanted to attack a Southern institution that had a lot of weapons, and after he captured the weapons in that federal arsenal in Harper's Ferry, he would then create a slave rebellion that would cross the state and would create a free, free state uh, in Southern territory. How this event divided the nation? Well, after he's caught and he's on his way to be executed, most rational people and most people on both sides believe that his violence made him deserving of this execution, but some people in the North ended up making him out to be a martyr. This upset the South because uh, John Brown led a raid and murdered innocent uh, citizens and innocent soldiers at Harper's Ferry, and so how could you possibly justify the actions of this radical? And so the fact that some Northerners, although they be radical, claim that he was a martyr, this greatly upset many of those in the South. Number nine, what happened to the Democrats during the presidential election of 1860? Well, they were divided in half, especially over the issue of, you guessed it, slavery. Uh, because Stephen A. Douglas, uh, the Northern Democratic uh, choice, because he had refused to defend slavery wholeheartedly in the debates with Abraham Lincoln, uh, the Southern Democrats walk out of the Democratic Convention. They end up having their own convention in the South and choosing their own presidential candidate. So the Democrats have a Northern candidate, which is Stephen A. Douglas, and a Southern candidate, who I believe is John C. Breckinridge. Number 10, describe the platform of the Republican Party in the election of 1860. First and foremost, the Republican Party supported free soil. They thought everything West should remain free and not be open to slavery. That means they're turning down the idea of popular sovereignty and going against uh, the agreement force in the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Uh, that alone upset the South. They also supported higher tariffs to protect manufacturing. They supported immigration to come in and work in that manufacturing. And they also supported the Homestead Act that uh, would allow for the land uh, further west to be sold cheaply to uh, uh, families who wanted to move out there, 10 acres for 160, excuse me, $10 for 160 acres. Uh, and so that would also restrict uh, its ability to be bought for slavery. Um, so when you think of it this way, the Republican Party's platform in no way would have benefited the South and did not match anything that they were aiming to do uh, as time went on. Number 11, why was the South opposed to Lincoln as president? Well, Lincoln was a proud and loud free soil candidate. While he was not proposing ending slavery, he was completely opposed to the extension of slavery into Western territory. Why would Lincoln not accept the Crittenden Compromise? So even though states are beginning to secede, the Crittenden Compromise said that going forward, we should just uh, go back to the Missouri Compromise and the Compromise of 1850. And if we just held on to those two compromises and enforce them again, then we could avoid further conflict. Unfortunately, Lincoln rejects it, but it's because it would have protected the possibility of Western territory being slave territory. As a free soil candidate, he refused to backtrack on his biggest campaign promise. Number 12, describe reasons beyond slavery that drove the South to secede. Well, we had a laundry list in your outline. This laundry list included the fact that they were threatened by Northern population, the fact that the Republican platform did not benefit them in any way, the fact that they were feeling constantly judged and looked down upon uh, by the moral criticism uh, rain, uh, being brought down from the North. They were convinced that their departure would be unopposed and that they had a legal and constitutional uh, uh, protection for 
uh, seceding. They also wanted to escape northern control. The North had decided many uh, uh, decisions over the last several years, and with a, a dominant number in Congress, that would continue. They wanted to develop their own banking and shipping industry. They believed Republicans would pass higher tariffs. Uh, and then finally, the biggest thing is that they supported principles of self-determination. They wanted to determine their own government free of uh, northern control and northern influence. And so that idea of wanting to determine their own government pushed them further. The truth of it, though, slavery is the primary issue. When you look up the, at the buildup throughout the 1800s, especially in the 1850s, the primary issue and dividing factor is slavery. That's it for Chapter 19 Key Questions. Hope this helped and answer all your questions. If you have any uh, uh, further questions or comments or maybe even some concerns, feel free to share them with me. See you.